The pop-off is one of the most electrifying moments in Smash, or any sport for that matter. And there is nobody in Melee who doesn't quite like Hungrybox. Yeah! Now, I've already broken down one of his most iconic pop-offs where he died, but since then, Hungrybox has once again been unleashed upon a live, in-person audience. No longer restricted by the confines of his stream room, Hungrybox is truly at his full power, and nobody, and no chair, has been safe since. That is, except for one man. At Get On My Level 2022, Hungrybox was about to do it again. The energy was building, the crowd was cheering, the tension was palpable. And then, IBDW did the impossible. He stopped Hungrybox. Today, it's time for a deep dive into the reverse pop-off, the incredible amount of force that goes into a Hungrybox dub, and the nigh incalculable amount of work done by Cody Schwab to prevent it on that fateful Sunday. He calls it out, and that's gonna be it! Yeah! 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 Wow. Before we even get into this moment, we should probably give a little bit of background. It's July 3rd, 2022, and we're at Get On My Level 2022 Top 8 in Toronto, Canada. Juan Hungrybox Debbie Edma is the Jigglypuff player here with the sunglasses that he uses for night vision and to look at his opponent's controller, and he's playing against Cody IBDW Schwab. Hungrybox was formerly one of the gods of Melee and had a period of being regarded as the best player in the world from 2017 to 2019 on the official rankings. IBDW, on the other hand, is the Giga Schwab. In the Summer 2022 rankings published just a month after this tournament, Cody would be marked down as Global Rank 2. But simple numbers and rankings aren't what we're here for. We're here for pop-offs, which I'll let Charlie define. A pop-off is defined by science as an emotional influx during an event. I'm making that up. I didn't feel like looking it up. But a pop-off is basically just like a big celebration. Hungrybox is known for his enthusiastic pop-offs, and especially in 2022, they had become synonymous with his brand. I talked about the thermoacoustic effect and how HBox was able to use that to reheat a pizza in another video, but what we're about to see is a whole different beast. It's winner semis. The winner is guaranteed at least third place. The loser still gets a shot at gold from the elimination bracket, but trust me, you guys are not prepared for what's about to happen. And as is tradition in a Hungrybox set, the life of a human being was in question on this warm Toronto night, and about between two of the best players in the world was about to go down for pride, glory, and $32. Let's get into it. But first, I want to thank my good friends at Into the AM for sponsoring this very real analysis. Into the AM is a team of artists and creators that's been outfitting your passion since 2012. They just launched a brand new collection of graphic tees, which are pretty sweet, and they sent me over a few of them as samples to show you guys. I'm really not kidding at this point. I've been working with Into the AM for so long that they're practically the only clothes I wear now, and I'm not even saying that as a shill or to try to convince you guys to get any. I genuinely like these clothes. They're really stylish, and I wear them on casual days at home, which are many of them because I'm still pretending that this channel is a real job. Please actually, though, Nala is getting kind of hungry. But yeah, if you're interested in upping your fashion a bit, I honestly can't recommend Into the AM enough. We're actually coming up on celebrating our first full year of partnering with each other, which I still think is just totally insane, but I really do think they're doing things right. If you'd like, you can use my promo code WALT at checkout, or go to intotheam.com slash WALT to get 10% off your order. And full transparency, using that link also affords me a small kickback, and that kind of helps inform Into the AM to keep sponsoring me, and sponsors kind of allow me to keep this channel afloat, so yeah, it's kind of important. Thank you again to Into the AM for supporting the channel. Now kick back, relax, and enjoy some good old-fashioned math. All right, so taking a look at the bracket, HBox was continuing on an incredibly long streak of never missing a top eight at a major, defeating Jamrun, Ben, and then none to make it into top eight winner's side without that much of an issue. Cody, on the other hand, took 3-0 victories over Duck and Zuppy before a close call 3-2 set with Mango placed him in top eight as well. However, by the numbers, this was honestly a pretty bad draw for HBox. Prior to this set, HBox had only beaten Cody two times out of seven events in 2022 at the Salt Mine 21 and the Ludwig Ogren Championship Series 4. And in 2021, just the year before that, HBox only won once at Smash Summit 11. That's not an awfully encouraging statistic, so I think it's pretty safe to say things weren't looking great for HBox. And HBox himself also had some thoughts about this head to head. Let's see what he had to say about the upcoming match. Now, this does make a lot of sense, but even a player of Hungrybox's caliber is forgetting something very important. IBDW had certainly figured something out when it came to Jigglypuff, but that's not even the most peculiar thing about this player. In the year 2024, he's currently the best player in the world, the first to ever become rank 1 as a solo Fox main, which sounds kind of weird if you know anything about how good Fox is as a character, but that's not the weirdest thing either. The most interesting thing about IBDW is that he changed his gamer tag. I really gotta change my tag. 
Yeah, that's right. Cody Cody Schwab Schwab isn't just a moniker for gaming enthusiasts everywhere. Cody Cody Schwab Schwab is Cody Cody Schwab Schwab's real government name. He ended up changing it from IBDW, which stood for I Be Doing Work, after Genesis 9 in 2023, but we'll talk more about that in a little bit. And yeah, it screams Xbox Live era, but it did get me thinking. How can someone just up and change their tag like that? Surely a lot of work would have to go into making such an impactful decision, right? Did IBDW even do enough work to be allowed to change his tag to Cody Cody Schwab Schwab? Now, a lot of you may be saying yes, of course he did. I mean, the dude did quit law school for this. He debuted on the 2017 Top 100 at rank 84 and worked his way up to number one in the world by the end of 2023. That's gotta be a lot of hard work. But I wanted to know, scientifically, if IBDW had done enough work to change his tag. Well, fortunately, I didn't go into, like, a lot of debt to get a master's degree in engineering to just say Cody did a sufficient amount of work without providing a definition for work. So, what is work, really? Work, as defined by Wikipedia, is a transfer of energy to or from an object via the application of force along a displacement. In a subject like thermodynamics, which I TA'd in before I threw all of that away to become a YouTuber, it's more or less a process of energy exchange, but for the sake of making this way less confusing, we'll just go with work in the context of physics. And unfortunately, I don't have a degree in physics, so I should probably let someone who does have a degree in physics take it from here, right? Is there anyone who has a degree in physics who can explain this for me, please? Oh, yeah, this'll work. Hi there, I'm Adef. Let's talk about work and whether or not we be doing it. Well, really whether or not he be doing it, whether or not he been doing it, whatever. Anyway, work is defined as the transfer of energy. Now, the word energy gets thrown around a lot in the world to mean a whole myriad of different things, some uses more scientific than others, but in the context of physics, you can basically think of energy as just an object's ability to enact a force. But energy is measured in joules and forces are measured in newtons, so what gives? Oh. Well, good news, a joule is just a fancy word for a newton meter, and we have a really nice quantity to compare these two things. It's called work. Oh my God, that's the topic of the video. As I said before, work is the transfer of energy, but it's also defined as the energy required to move an object a given distance using a force. Work is equal to force times distance. If ever there's an angle involved, we multiply cosine theta to the end to account for it. For all my math heads out there, it should be pretty obvious that the cosine basically just simplifies the vector into its parallel component. Luckily, for our pop-offs, we don't really need to worry about it. Since both players start on stage level and finish their pop-offs on stage level, we don't really need to worry about gravitational potential energy. And although Walt asked me to do this on the pretense that I'd go completely insano mode on this segment math-wise, I don't think we need to worry about the chemical potential of the food they ate, activating their cells, or the elastic potential of their muscles and bones or whatever. I just don't think we need to go that deep. It's a video about Super Smash Bros. Melee, and it's also an April Fool's bit, so I think we're probably fine. So all told, the equation we'll be using is work equals the change in kinetic energy or delta K. Okay, well, is that good enough? Did I do my part? Can I go home? Yeah, yeah, okay, man. God, physics majors, always wanting about something. Ooh, can I go home now? Shut up, bro. All right, so our conditions are as follows. We calculate how much work Cody did in his reverse pop-off. If it's greater than the average amount of work done in a typical Hungrybox pop-off, Cody can legally change his tag. If not, well, it may have to actually be between that and Schwab. What we really want to find here is the net amount of work done by forces on an object, which we can actually calculate by finding the kinetic energy of Cody's pop-off. Our net work would simply be equal to the change in kinetic energy, or the final kinetic energy minus the initial. For the sake of simplicity, we can assume our initial kinetic energy is zero, as gamers have surely developed a secret technique to sitting perfectly still, which means we only need to solve for a final kinetic energy for each player to determine our net work. Our equation for kinetic energy is right here, where m equals mass and v equals velocity, which is further broken down into distance over time. Now, to actually solve for the amount of work Cody be doing, we need to estimate Cody's mass. And I didn't want to ask for their actual weights because... rude, but I figured I could assume for average body weight based on height, which is a much more approachable thing to ask, so I popped into Cody's chat to ask him how tall he was myself. How tall are you? <laughs> Which is the same as the Xbox. I am not as tall as the Xbox. I'm 5'9. He's like 5'10, 5 5'11. 5 Alright, so 5'9 for Cody. As for Hbox, he's a little bit too Hollywood for me, so I turned to Twitter for help, and a few folks seem to have landed on him being around 5'10 to 5'11, so we'll call it at 5'11 to be a little generous. 
The average body weight for a 5'9 male is around 170 pounds, and for a 5'11 male, that's around 190 pounds. What we're failing to consider here, though, is that Hungrybox has a galaxy dumper, so we're going to add a coefficient of gyat to this measurement to account for the added mass of this doomsday wagon. To determine Cody's velocity, we'll count the number of frames he takes to reach Hungrybox, which happens around here. And fortunately, Red Leader on YouTube has a crowd angle of this, which makes our lives a little bit easier. As for distance, I reached out to the production team that built the stage for Gommel 2022 for confirmation and found out that the top eight CRTs are 24 inch Trinitrons, which measure out to approximately 28.125 inches in width. That tablet between them is about 12 inches in width, so if we assume our players are perfectly centered on the TVs, that makes the straight line distance between them about 40 inches or 1.02 meters. Cody fully stands up from his chair here, which we'll call our time zero, and makes it to HBOX for the reverse pop-off in about 41 frames or 0.68 seconds. Plugging everything into this equation from before leaves us with a final measurement of 86.75 joules. Okay, so now let's get to Hungrybox. Since his pop-off was interrupted here, we'll take a mean kinetic energy across a couple of his other pop-offs to establish a baseline. The feint is clearly an outlier since he released power unknown by man, so we won't be considering that one. So let's look at the Wave Dash 2022 pop-off first, since we can pretty cleanly measure the travel distance of the chair he launched for our velocity measurement. From the top of his head to the ground, the chair travels about the full length of this table, plus a couple feet give or take to account for the throwing angle. One of these tables on Uline measures about 72 inches or 6 feet, so let's call it a combined travel distance of 96 inches or 2.44 meters. This guy's head blocks the frame here on the crowd view, but I counted 43 frames or 0.72 seconds as the time it took for HBOX to release the chair from the top of his head until the chair basically stopped traveling any additional distance. So after converting to metric and remembering to account for the coefficient of gyat, we have a kinetic energy output of approximately 573 joules. Okay, so that's uh, significantly higher than Cody's network of 86.75, but what about this one where HBOX breaks his foot? Well, at 5'11", we can assume he has about a 32-inch inseam, which gives us a length to roughly estimate the arc of his kick. From this perspective, our central angle theta looks to be about 75 degrees, measuring from the top of his kick to where he impacts, and we can use this formula to determine our arc length, which maths out to approximately 41.89 inches or 1.06 meters. It takes about 15 frames or 0.25 seconds from the top of his kick's arc to impact, which is incredible frame data by the way, but we can plug all of this back into that same kinetic energy formula to get almost 897 joules, holy shit. As an aside, we do know that HBOX didn't actually break his foot here, but a 2005 study found that it can take only 375 joules of energy to crack the bone when the applied force is within 5 degrees of orientation of the collagen fibers, so, uh, doable, I guess? But unfortunately, given those two values from HBOX and just how common pop-offs of this magnitude are when it comes to this player, this seems like a pretty open and shut case of not enough work being done. We learned about syncope in that HBOX fainting analysis, but it does raise the question. What if Cody had just committed to fainting? Would it have been enough work then? Well, let's add the feint to his travel distance, and assuming a right triangle, we can use Pythagorean's theorem for ease of calculations. At 5'9", as our A and B in this right triangle, that would make the hypotenuse, or his straight line fall distance, about 2.47 meters. OSHA regulations has this table, which states you can fall about 1.2 meters in half a second, and 5 meters in 1 second, so our travel time is somewhere between 0.5 and 1 seconds. If we throw together proportions against each of these and average out our results, we're left with a travel time of 0.76 seconds, giving us a new kinetic energy of 448.32 joules, still less than HBOX from the top rope with the steel chair. I hate to say it, but the numbers don't lie. Cody, I be doing work, Schwab, really is a misnomer. Unfortunately, not enough work was done for science to reasonably say he was able to change his tag. There are a lot of ways to theorize how Cody could have done enough work, but the YouTube comment from Gilgamesh5796 is perhaps the most terrifying of them all. In it, he says, The counterplay is already being theorized by Crunch, who's HBox's coach. I hear they're thinking about delayed pop-offs, offstage pop-offs, and possibly joining his pop-off with Cody's, but go even harder and start lifting Cody up like he's Rudy from the movie Rudy. Regardless of what could have been though, Hungrybox would go on to win this entire tournament, while Cody would ultimately exit Gommel 2022 at 5th place following the reverse pop-off. This would result in Cody earning about 200 bucks for his efforts, while the number of Twitch subscribers HBox would get from watching this back and also reacting to this very video would be numerous. Thanks for watching.
Well, he's stealing his moment there, Walt. Oof. We're going to get that one on a clip, right? Oh, absolutely. Is that in the replays? Okay, okay. What an insane sequence. Uh, both players kind of playing in a bit of an unorthodox way. I have never seen someone go for the reverse pop-off, but there was he a lot of stuff that we... He really did, man. Ah, yes, another April Fool's of using my real degree to do the most bullshit math imaginable in the books. So, I decided to do this video like two days before it needed to be finished, so I do want to give a huge thanks to ADEF for being a super homie and wanting to feature in this. He makes a ton of really cool STEM-related things in Pokémon, so you should definitely check him out if you aren't familiar. Thanks again to my top tier patrons who help make videos like these possible, including Avishua Stein, Bobby Wasabi, Eric is Cool, and NNG Esports. And if you want to support me and have the disposable income to do so, you can join the Patreon over at the link in the description.